I'm delighted to say Mickey Quinn joins us this morning to talk to us about uh, how he's dealing with the uh, the lock in as we're as we're now calling it. Um, Mickey, how are you getting on? What's the crack? Good, thanks. Good. Um, battling away, but uh, look, it's strange times. It takes a bit of getting used to, but um, just trying to find a bit of routine to every day at this stage and having a bit of fun with different skill challenges probably kept my mind occupied and kept me busy for a while. Yeah, it totally did, because you were actually, I think, probably one of the first people to take to social media and to put skills challenges up there. And the response has been brilliant. Like, people have genuinely taken this on and, and got involved in it. And we're now kind of two and a half weeks in. It's kind of, it's maturing to the point where people expect you to be doing this kind of stuff now. Yeah, I, I think probably when you're missing sport, um, the next best thing that you can have really is some form of a challenge that will bring out that competitive nature that that you're missing, whether you see someone else doing it or you're doing it yourself and you're trying to to be the front front runner in some form of a challenge. Um, because I think that's probably the nature of the beast, that when you don't have that competitive nature of playing games week in, week out, um, you need something to, to keep you taking over, whether it be skill challenges or running sessions or something to to do to to give you that little bit of a buzz to to keep you going so that was kind of the initial thing and I suppose one of the the, the joys about it is it's a lot of the skills that we're seeing they're not really skills you're going to see in a in a Gaelic football game but I think everyone's hoping that when when the games start back that we hopefully will see something new uh, and created uh, over this time. Can I just ask about that? Why, like, so what would happen to you if you did? So we, we've been rolling the, the um, two there, the, the flick up, which is obviously, you know, it would be very risky in a game situation. But the shot where, um, I don't know if you can describe it for people who are just listening on the radio, but essentially it's like a completely camouflage dropping of the ball from the right hand and kicking it behind your right foot, kicking it with your left foot into the bottom left hand corner. I would, like, we would all pay to see that in a game. That would just be sensational, even if it was just a pass to a teammate. Yeah, I think probably, well, I think it was 2015, I was doing it, uh, one of the international rules training sessions up um, after after training and Niall Morgan was in goals and I came in and done it and it flew straight into the top left corner and Pori Joyce was one of the selectors at the time and he, he took out the camera and said, just do that again. And as soon as I went to do it again, I just swung it fresh air, missed it the next time. So that kind of put it to bed for, for a while. Uh, I said, no, needs a bit more work now. And me as a, a back getting into that position, you, you get a rush of blood at the best of times. So to try something like that, you need uh, maybe someone like Jamie Clark, someone with a bit of composure when you get in that close to goal and getting there a bit more regular. It, it's almost like as a back, you needed to come up with something to to camouflage it. Jamie Clark has like his feints and he's got his his shoulders and hips are going to do the job for him. It just as a matter of interest, right? And I, like I, this is a complete tangent. Why don't we see more of this type of stuff in on the field in GA? Like because most sports have people who are kind of just trying tricks and and stuff for the sake of it. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be something that's actively encouraged that much. Yeah, it's a bit like. Do you know, it's skills that aren't really practiced. Like, I think probably most coaching at the moment is, you know, your hand pass, your kick pass, and a catch, and even a pickup. And, and that's really it. And I suppose probably from where I'm coming from, probably the PE teaching side of things or even the coaching side of things, that you're like, be creative, get, try something new. Um, do you know, there's lots of different skills and things that can be done, but I, I think it's probably not encouraged enough um, and probably not practiced enough to try different things. And it's frowned upon to you know, stick to the basics, simple kick pass. And it probably comes in waves where, you know, people go out and do the simple thing right. And that's the focus. And, you know, play to the structures or systems that you're trying to do. Don't give the ball away. Um, whereas, you know, this could be a change in, in Gaelic football when, when things do come back that, you know, things might be more... Um, tested or tried out and, and change things up a little bit. So that's the the um I, what do you call that? Do you have a do you have a name for that? No, <laughs> you have to come up with a name for it. Um it, it just comes round the back from the right hand through the legs and kind of hit it on a half volley with the left foot. So I'm right footed but 
whatever way I found it, it's I find it easier going from the right to the left foot, whereas most people would probably prefer to do it the opposite way around with their stronger foot. Um, but yeah, yet to come up with a name. Well, that's the only thing it's missing. That's the, the little bit of marketing that you need for it. The other one is just um, a flick where you, you, you bang the ball off the ground and it it, it um, kind of nicely arcs over into your hands. Is that right? Is that, am I describing that right? Yeah, I think I remember watching years ago uh, Drogba doing it on Soccer AM, seeing one of those skill things and I saw Drogba doing it and it took me a long time to get it and had to get a very bouncy ball starting off with. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of fun now. And when you put that out, what's the response been like from people around the country? Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. Like, it's kind of a bit of a mix from, from different people, whether, you know, Jesus, how do you do that? And you can see Kieran Ling um, put up a different flick up and kicking a point. And there's a few other guys that responded with different things. Um, so, you know, it's it's brilliant to see you know, different players with different tricks and what's what's in the locker. Because I think when you see different guys stepping out in the field and oh, geez, he's a corner back or he's a he's a corner forward, he must be skillful. You don't really get to see apart from a dummy solo, um, or even a fancy flick up, which is maybe not that fancy as the one I tried uh, in a game. That's probably the height of it that you'll see, or a feint or something like that. Uh, whereas a lot of the skills, there are a lot of guys that would have played soccer or different sports that would have skills that you probably go unnoticed and taken for granted that these guys are skillful mm. players, but they're probably doing the basics so well and stick to the basics and never really get a chance to express or show that bit of flair. Mickey, you regret you did a video for us yesterday for Off the Couch, which is our uh, our daily bit of movement, trying to get people just to go out and do something. And this one is kind of for everybody of, of all ages. Um, it's fairly straightforward, but it is uh, eye-to-hand coordination and some ball skills. Yeah, um, probably one of the big things that I would have picked up from being in Australia was just basic ball handling skills. And there's a lot of that stuff that... Um, it, it's came from there, so tram tracks and, and different things. Like I think one of the big things with, um, with that kind of ball handling skills and hand-eye coordination stuff is that you could touch the ball 300 times in maybe five, 10 minutes. Whereas if you go out in a group session and just you're taking part in a normal training session, if you touch it 40 to 50 times in an hour, an hour and a half, that's probably as much as you, you get. Whereas that kind of one-to-one -one stuff or even in groups of two, smaller stuff, you're going to work on massive amount of ball handling skills. So, um, yeah, some some bit of fun and bit of competitive stuff that we kind of try and implement with with coaching underage teams and and try and bring in that. It's a lot of those things can range from underage right up, and you just you either make it harder by adding another ball or adding time or or taking away a bit of space to make it harder for for guys. So. All that, all those drills are kind of, as like you said, they're for, for everyone. Mickey, your your day job is um, as a teacher. You, you teach uh, PE and maths, and I know you've got a, a junior cert maths class going on at the moment. What's that actually like? How much of um, how much of that has kind of been a, a bit of a concern, and what kind of anxiety are you seeing from your students at the moment? I suppose I'm lucky enough. I probably leave in cert is where you know it's going to be a lot more difficult. Um, the junior search you, is probably not taken as serious um, so it's just gradually building building. it's probably at the beginning it took a while to get uh, guys engaged in, in the process um, of probably taking pictures of assignments and sending them off and, and you know doing the work whereas I think it just that first initial week or two took time whereas I think now definitely probably uh, two thirds uh, or more are probably engaging really well and a few still still to engage that bit more but I think it's the unknown um, it, when's it going to happen it, is it going to take place with the junior search um, and, and that's that's the I think the fear across the board with everything whether it be sports the junior search the leaving search work when are we going back and no one really knows and I think that's where you know, the difficult side of things is, especially for students to try and get motivated and say, right, I'm going to do do this work. I'm going to get stuck into it. Because if if you don't know when it's coming up, 
um, that's that's hard, especially for for teenagers, let alone adults that are kind of a bit more mature and able to deal with things. And um, that's that's where uh, a lot of them are probably finding it most difficult. Yeah, it's an uncertain time at the best of times. Add in a global pandemic, and all of a sudden it's like, hang on a second, what the hell's going on here? Um, as a matter of interest, as a as a PE teacher, where do you think we are as a country with our mobility skills? And is there an opportunity here for like a, a mass messaging campaign to remind everybody to get off the couch and to use this opportunity to become a bit more proficient in eye to hand coordination and doing some exercise, any of that kind of stuff? Definitely, and that's probably one of the things that I've probably been big on um, as a teacher and probably coaching too, that hand-eye coordination and different fundamental movement skills. Um, they're probably they're not up to scratch. They're they're way behind where they should be. Um, and I see it with students coming in in first year that you know they haven't developed those basic skills that they're supposed to have by the age they're twelve, and then that's the dis disappointing side of things like when kids start to play team sports and they don't have those basic skills they're never going to prosper or do well at that sport and then they get turned off sport in general because if you don't have those basics of jumping landing catching throwing you go out and go into a game of basketball let's say five on five and you're not able to do those skills you're definitely not going to like that sport so to throw someone into a game situation like that, they're just going to get browned off and, and won't enjoy that sport. So I think in one sense, it's an opportunity to to promote and to work on these skills. But I think the big thing that probably not overloading kids with, with information and different bits and pieces, um, because I think you see the, the young kid that was setting up the goals and playing in goals and practicing different things like it's just getting out and playing and being inventive and trying different things and I suppose by giving kids a few tools whether it be tennis balls and a wall and a bit of an idea off which you try something new whether it be clapping before you catch it when you throw it off the wall or turning it around or up in the sky or closing your eyes you can try different things and I think it's an opportunity for kids to learn how to play again from all ages and um, just getting out um, and, and, and trying different things. Whereas I think at the moment, everything is so structured from a P side of things and from a, a play or coaching side of things, everything, kids need that structure. Whereas it could be an opportunity now for, for kids just go out, get outside, try something new, uh, whether it be setting up your own games, relay races, uh, soccer, bins and goals, different target practice, different things like that. So I think, there's a lot to be said for that play time, whereas years ago that was what kids done, whereas now it's sitting down on the phone and doing just playing different games. Yeah, no, and look, any any good that might come out of this would be great. Um, I, I just want to briefly ask you about GA and, and what your feeling is about some kind of return to action. There's a story in the back of the Independent today where the Wexford County chairman is suggesting that maybe the right thing to do is to play club championships first. You know, it would be a graduated step back into intercounty, smaller crowds, which I think is actually going to be a very important thing when it comes to some restoration of normal life. Like, can we really see a, a position where social distancing is gone and all of a sudden it's grand to have 80,000 in the stadium? I think we could be quite a long time away from that. So maybe a couple of months of local action where, you know, it's easier to steward, you can limit crowds. You know, it, it's up to the local county boards to police, but actually there might be a way where the whole country understands that. And then you restore whatever is coming in, in terms of a championship. It's not the, you know, it's not the most obvious thing to be talking about right now, but down the line when the curve is flattened and it's safe to do so, does that make a bit of sense? Yeah, it's probably something that I haven't heard that side of things um, yet as discussed. Um, but... I think there's a lot of a sense to, to what he's saying. And I think it's something that you almost need to sit in your hands for a long time here and not make any real quick decisions because it's it's long term. And that does make sense. Club, club games kind of bringing that community side of things on a smaller scale and then gradually building it up to keep crowds that they're not big, massive crowds at games. And um, also heard played the last two league games and then straight into a knockout championship if you're going to continue with um, continue with the inter-county season first that the two league games would be almost your warm-up for 
mm. for your uh, championship structure. Do you know, it's it's one of those things that what's the most important and why is it the most important uh, championship game or competitions at the moment? Is it the league? Is it the province? Is it the All Ireland series? Or do you go back to the basics and go with your club? That club is the be all and end all at the moment, and you know it could be a great point to, to start with that and, and build and, and see. But I think it's one of those difficult decisions that you kind of just have to sit and wait. And I suppose no one likes doing that and the uncertainty builds even more. But I think it's not one of those things that can be rushed into with, with the circumstances. One last question. As a, as a player, would you mind playing inter-county games in October and November if the season had to go that late? Like... Because there's definitely a sense that they want the inter-county season finished by September so that some form of normality can return to the club season. But like, if this year should be considered a, a, a different year and they were to do club first and then have the club championships, uh, the inter-county club championships from January on. But if the inter-county season was to continue on into September, October, November, as a player, would you mind that? I don't think so. I think it's unprecedented times. So most people are kind of... Look at whether it be November, December. I'm at the stage now where I'd be like a newborn calf let out into the field. Just you'd be crazy to just get out and play a ball, whether it be that time of the year or over the summer. That it, it wouldn't make a difference. Um, and I think most people would be of the same same thinking that just just to get out and 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 get things going again. Um, and if it meant going right up until November, December, I don't think it it would be an issue. Yeah, Mickey, your videos have been great. Um, I, I, I presume you have plenty more planned for us. You've got other great tricks in the book that are going to go viral the way your first two did. I'm running out very quickly. I think I, I overshot the mark too early. I should have built up slowly. Um, I think I, I went with the big ones too early now. I'm running out. I think a basic solo now is the height of it at this stage. Well, listen, best of luck with it. Thanks a million for doing off the couch for us. And, uh, and stay safe. Brilliant. Thanks very much. You too. Mickey Quinn there, the, uh, the longer footballer, a PE teacher, obviously, in St. Mel's and um, a math teacher as well, of course. You should check out his uh, social media feed and you can check out his Off the Couch for us yesterday. More of those coming your way uh, every afternoon around about one o'clock. Now, Danny Higginbotham joined Joe Malloy on last night's football show for a chat about his career. And, uh, of course, we got talking about Roy Keane. 